nine. Georgetown University is announcing a plan to make up for the past. Nearly two centuries ago, the university traded 272 slaves for profit. Now the school is awarding preferential admission status to descendants of those slaves. My political power panel is here. Democratic strategist Jessica Tarlov, conservative commentator Kirsten Hagland, and Independent Women's Forum senior fellow Patrice Lee. Welcome to you all. Jessica, what do you make of this? Is uh, how do you see this contextually? I think uh, contextually, I think it's a very interesting development. Um, the coverage has shown that there are a bunch of universities across the country that have actually talked openly about their past ill behavior in terms of the slave trade. And we are just discussing this is a big issue at Emory University, obviously, and that Emory is in a big black community down in Atlanta. So I think that it's a great thing to be talking about it. And we don't have a ton of clarity actually on how this preferential treatment uh, will play out, but I. I think that if we know that admissions process does give points, as it were, to different kinds of categories, whether it be alumni parents or for diversity reasons, ethnic, religious, et cetera, why shouldn't this be a characteristic that they take into consideration? Patrice, are you in agreement with that? I'm absolutely not in agreement with that. I mean, let's think about, number one, from a practical level, how difficult is it going to be to be able to trace back the, ans the uh, ancestors of those of slaves and then those, uh, their grandchildren, great-grandchildren generations later to then provide them preferential treatment? Are we then saying that they're not good enough on their own merit to be able to get into these institutions? I mean, it seems to me like it's just a backdoor way of providing uh, for some new racial quotas. Patrice, you know, I asked people, that very question because I agree in the sense I was wondering just from a paperwork trail how mm -hmm. difficult it would be but it seems as if Georgetown actually kept scrupulous uh, records uh, so it is possible for people to identify themselves but you're still I saying you don't like it I, I don't like it because you know what I'm a, a young black woman and I've made it on my merits you know uh, my I'm from the islands but we had slavery there and we do much more service to those to my I do more service to my ancestors by being a poised educated woman who's relying on my own ability than trying to take some sort of back end reparations or something like that Kirsten, uh, what is your take because the idea of course for anybody who is considered a minority ca a category as Patrice just said, they want to be considered and rewarded on their own merits. Right. However, the other side of the argument is that we have had a lot of advantages, perhaps in other ways. Right. Well, I mean, this is an ongoing conversation. There's still a lot of disagreement across the board from various groups about kinds of affirmative action, which this isn't specifically, but generally it's what it is. Um, but, you know, there is a sense that universities in this country and a lot of institutions, I think, have been really bad in the past about apologizing for past behavior, saying, hey, we were wrong about this. What I just wonder is why now? And that's what makes me a little bit questioning of this move, right? Because if it was 1838 when this originally happened, why in 2016 are you just doing this now? Is it about a PR move? Is it well, about they, how it, they how it convene looks? convene that you know? council. I mean, right, but why did they decide to convene the conference, the council now? It just, and even some of the, the descendants, and in fact, one is mentioned in the New York Times article, said, you know, we weren't even invited to the announcement. They didn't even let us know. And it's going to be Georgetown's responsibility to then find and recruit those descendants now into the program. So different. it might just be a PR move. I'm not sure. What were you going to say, Jessica? Oh, no, I was just going to say that I, I, I understand being suspicious of the timing, as it were, but we're in 2016. We're coming to the end of our first black president's tenure. There's a lot of talk about race in this country and a lot about PC culture and affirmative action, which I believe that this will be part of the affirmative action debate. Um, so I think that it is the right time for it. And I, it again, I think, sooner, I think. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I yeah. know. But I yeah. yes, absolutely just, should have done it sooner. Yeah, but Patrice, it, it can, last words going to you. Yeah. Let me just jump in and say that, you know what, I am, I'm proud that we're actually talking about slavery and the history of this country. We can all agree that, yeah, there were some very heinous things that occurred. Right. But let's make this a teachable moment and move on, not wallow in slavery and wallow in what happened in the past. Patrice, thank you. I'm sorry. We're out of time. I want you all back. Patrice, Kirsten, and Jessica, thank you.